This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. I have some actually good news for you today. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Two different stories, one short and the other rather large, because it involves the protection of the sacraments from the prying eyes of Caesar. I usually do report good news from time to time, even though people say I never actually do. It makes me wonder if they actually watch very often. But anyway, let's get into the good news because, as I say later, one of these stories is a reminder that Christ is really protecting his church from the worst things the devil and his henchmen tried to do. So let's start with a quick story which comes our way from Guadalajara, Mexico, and the situation with the traditional Latin Mass, the traditional sacraments, and the FSSP. A couple of months ago, the Latin Mass there was squashed by the ordinary in keeping with Francis's dictates in Traditionis Custodis. Things appear to have changed for the better. From the FSSP in Mexico Facebook page comes this update, quote, This Wednesday, November 17th, was a special day for the FSSP in Mexico, as we had the honor of receive, receiving His Eminence, Cardinal Francisco Robles Ortega, for, from whom we received the blessing of the new Via Crucis of the Chapel of the Cristo Rey House, and the blessing of the image of the Holy Heart to whom the chapel is dedicated. After her words, we had a very brotherly meeting with a good con and a good conversation, where the Cardinal confirms to us that he allows us to continue the work of our Apostle." End quote. That is a translation from the Facebook page, so sorry, it's a little bit clunky, but in other words, the Cardinal is permitting them to continue to operate there. One of the FSSP's largest, if not the largest, apostolate is safe, at least for the time being. Now, if you're not aware, a couple of months ago, draconian restrictions were placed on the FSSP operating in Mexico, which caused quite the stir around the world when the news broke. The lady prayerfully and respectfully requested that the bishop re reconsider what he is doing, and it actually worked. I'm honestly surprised, and pleasantly so. Thanks be to God for the preservation of the Mass and the sacraments in their traditional form in that part of the country. That is good news and worth celebrating. And as for a reminder, as the synods are going on, the way the laity there handled that situation is precisely how I've been asking people to handle their local synods, because I'm asking people to participate, to make sure that the voice of traditionally minded Catholics are heard, that those who have the faith are heard, because the other side's going to be pushing for their changes too. Take note on how they handled this. This is how to, this is the way, folks. But our main good news story is this. Francis did something good. Yes, I know. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, but he actually did something good. The blog, The Eponymous Flower, brought this story to my attention, so I'll give them credit for it, despite it being a repost from the Vatican website. Headline, Bergoglio defends the secrecy of, con the, of the confessional. Now, you may be aware that secular rulers in various far-flung parts of the world, ranging from some places in the United States to far off Australia and everywhere in between have been pushing to have the seal of confession broken, meaning that they want the henchmen of Caesar to be able to force a priest to report to the authorities what is said in the confessional. Since the birth of the church, this has been forbidden, bearing an automatic loss of faculties and excommunication if the priest who would do such a thing. Many priests have been forced into servitude by the state instead of breaking the seal of confession. I'll have more on the seal of confession here after the story itself. From that good news story, we have this, quote, On November 8th, the Vatican Press Office published a short message in the Daily Bulletin. This morning, the Holy Father Francis presided over a meeting of the heads of the dicasteries of the Roman Curia and the Apostolic Palace of the Vatican. Such meetings are always announced after the fact. You don't learn anything about the content. But now, Franca Gian Soldati, the Bergolian Vaticanist of the Roman Messaggero, reported on this. She has a good connection to the papal suite. It can therefore be assumed that her quote-unquote unveiling is desired by Santa Marta. According to Gian Soldati, the papal message to the Roman Curia was clear. This message should also be heard publicly. The confessional seal also applies to the priests who have engaged in the evil deeds of a mechanic nature. Pope Francis told his senior staff that he was determined to oppose any pressure that urges the revocation of the confessional seal, including those kinds of deeds. The confessional seal is a unity and inviolable. Gian Soldati quotes the Pope verbatim. The confessional seal is sacred and inviolable. It is a point that will remain irrefutable and uncontestable. I am ready to use all my magisterial weight to defend it. The Vatican writes, 
With these words, the Pope created a solemn atmosphere in the room in which he met his closest collaborators in the Curia at the recent meeting of the heads of the dicasteries. Francis summarized the recent disputes before the cardinals and bishops present. Specifically, it's about a diplomatic controversy between France and the Holy See. In the connection with the investigations against clerics like McCarrick, not only in France are prosecutors and judges hoping for more efficient criminal prosecutions by lifting the confidentiality of confession. The background to this is the shocking revelations about the extent of the problem in France. Although these are only estimates and a period of seven years, the extent remains enormous despite all the drawbacks." End quote. In the name of justice, the secular authorities are pushing to end the sealed confession, and it's the same everywhere. And this time it's in the eldest daughter of the church, France, that this push is coming the most strongest. Disregard the fact that the recent story about the McCarrick type situation in France was based on the shakiest numbers imaginable, with all the reports being made via an anonymous hotline, meaning there's no way to verify the claims. And of course, certain outlets ran with that story uncritically, reporting on it as if it were true, without assuming that maybe the forces in the world against the church might be up to something. We see this all the time in the church and outside of it, to the point that those stories aren't even worth commenting on until they've had a time to develop, and to be looked into by dispassionate third parties. But I digress. Francis has done the right thing here. For once, whether he will really remain steadfast in the face of pressure from his secular allies is anyone's guess. I hate that it took pressure from the specter of 2003 and the mess involving McCarrick to get Francis to take an actually Catholic stand on something. Now, if you have an investigation into these clerics in order to find out if they're actually complicit in what's alleged, that'd be great. If they are found to be, then recall them to the Holy See and publicly, shall we say, make a quick example of them. That'd be great, too. But that won't happen. Not in modernist Rome and not in the modern era, where people's notions of justice are skewed to the point of rejecting what the church has always taught about the validity and justice of the ultimate punishment that can be meted out. Here's the thing about this, though. It's not new. The Catholic media has done a terrible job of highlighting this, to be honest. This goes back at least three years. Francis has, has made a recent personal meeting with the Prime Minister of France. The Prime Minister asked Francis to permit the priest to break the seal of confession. Quoting that same story, quote, Even then, Francis made it clear to his guests that the discussion about it need not even begin, because it was out of the question. The confessional secret cannot be split up according to deeds, meaning it can't be split up with some exceptions. It applies always and without restriction. That cannot be shaken. Any violation of the secret of confession is a sacrilege and therefore cannot be compared with a secular professional secret or state official secret, which under certain conditions could be revoked or released. Cardinal Vincent Nichols, Archbishop of Westminster and Primate of England and Wales, had already declared before the Independent Commission of Inquiry into the same problem in his country. The priest would rather die or go to prison than break the confessional secret. One should have just listened, asked, added Gian Soldati in her article. Three years ago, the Apostolic Penitentiary informed the Royal Commission that the Church would cooperate in any way to partially deal with that problem, with one caveat. The violation of the secrecy of confession is exempt. The chairman of the French Bishops' Conference, Eric de Moines Beaufort, had said after the publication of the shocking report under the impression, a public outcry that it was necessary to bring the nature of confession, quote unquote, in harmony with the need to shield the typical victims. Pope Francis apparently wanted to make it clear what could not be meant by this. On November 26th, Pope Francis will receive French President Emmanuel Macron in his audience. In this context, attention is also drawn to the simmering controversy. End quote. Now, at the time of the production of this episode, there's no meeting, how, uh, no word on how that meeting went. I'm sure that some will say Francis only did this to protect his friends. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. He does have a rather long and disturbing history of bringing McCarrick type men into his personal sphere in Rome. That's undisputable. And his endorsement of Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church's work underscores that critique. And yes, those are both related. No matter what people will tell you, they're absolutely related. They're tied to the hip. But also, perhaps that's true, where, you know, that, you know, his endorsement of Pastor Jimmy Martin is also, you know, undermining his entire credibility on this. I, I'll, I'll grant that. But I will still take the defense of the inviolable nature of the seal of confession either way, regardless. There's a good article from the website Catholic Straight Answers, which is not the more well-known and modernist Catholic Answers website. At Catholic Straight Answers, we get some insight into the seal of confession and why it's so critical in our time. It's a lengthy quote, but it really makes clear the gravity of the seal of confession and the nature of the sacrament involved. Pay attention. Quote, 
The standard of secrecy protecting a confession outweighs any form of professional confidentiality or secret. When a person unburdens his soul and confesses his sin to a priest in the sacrament of penance, a very sacred trust is formed. While the priest is the minister of the sacrament, Christ is forgiving the sins, and the priest must not reveal to anyone else what has been really confessed to the Lord. Moreover, what sins are forgiven are now in one's past, not to be carried into the present via some communication. Therefore, the priest must maintain absolute secrecy about anything that a person confesses. For this reason, confessionals were developed with screens to protect the anonymity of the penitent and to alleviate the possibility of the priest remembering a face with a confession. This secrecy is called the sacramental seal, the seal of the confessional, or the seal of confession. The sacramental seal is inviolable. Quoting Canon 983.1 of the Code of Canon Law, the Catechism states, quote, It is a crime for a confessor in any way to betray a penitent by word or in any other manner for any reason. A priest, therefore, cannot break the seal to save his own life, to protect his good name, to refute a false accusation, to save the life of another, to aid the course of justice, or to avert a public calamity. He cannot be compelled by law to disclose a person's confession, or to be bound by any oath he takes, for example, as a witness in a court trial. A priest cannot reveal the contents of a confession either directly by repeating the substance of what has been said, or indirectly by some sign, suggestion, or action. A decree from the Holy Office dated November 18th, 1682, mandated that confessors are forbidden, even where there would be no revelation, direct or indirect, make any use of the knowledge obtained in the confession that would displease the penitent or reveal his identity. Therefore, from the time a person makes the sign of the cross and begins, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, to the last words of absolution, the information exchanged between the priest and the penitent is protected by the sacramental seal, even if a confession is made in a less formal atmosphere or in a less formal way. If a priest imparts absolution, what he absolves is under the sacramental seal, never to be revealed by him. End lengthy quote. We are talking about something sacred, something holier. For once Francis did the right thing. Everything I just read to you there comes with comes with one caveat. There are some sins that are so grave that the priest must ask his uh, his um, superior, meaning the bishop, for permission to absolve them. You can guess what some of those are. Francis may move in that direction on this issue, and that may be his prerogative. But until then, for once, Francis has done the right thing, and thanks be to God for it. That sign enough that Christ's promise is still with us, that he won't abandon his sheep. In dark times, he gives us signs for those with eyes to see, and this is certainly one of them. Caesar is growing bolder by the day, and for once, Francis stood up to him. Praise God. So we have two bits of good news today. The FSSP in Mexico have been preserved, at least for the time being, and Francis actually did something not only good, but critically important. Both are good things and worthy of being focused on today. We are early in Advent, so I hope your Advent has been a joyful period of penance thus far, in keeping with the traditional preparation for the coming of our blessed Lord. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the story, and like and subscribe if you haven't. It's oh, It does help. As always, pray for the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.